hands is too tall. <laughs> Hello again, everybody. It's me again. And as Jens mentioned and Krista mentioned, I'm going to talk about our work trying to monitor the environment effects on the epigenome of the bovine embryos, a view on the chromatin accessibility, and I want to highlight that these are really preliminary results because we are trying to put together the different layers of information that we have for the embryos. So we have some interesting things that we can already share, but they are preliminary results. Just a bit of context, we know from the literature that increased oleic acid concentrations can affect the functionality of somatic follicular cells, including one of the papers published by one of the members of the team, in vitro and in vivo. This suggests that post-parturation and ovulation might be caused by increased fatty acid concentrations, and to try to test this hypothesis and to try to understand it a little bit better, we did first one experiment, what we call in vitro metabolic stress challenge of the embryos. This experiment was conducted by the team of Jens in FBN, which basically from the embryos in the normal median culture, we have split it on three different groups. We have groups which are controlled and continue with the standard protocol for these embryos. We have the second group where we have 0.2% of bovine zero albumin, BSA. And we have the third group where we have the bovine zero, 0.2%, plus a high concentration of oleic acid. We wanted to test and see if this concentration of oleic acid has an impact on the open chromatin accessibility on these embryos. Here, it's also important to highlight that we have four replicates in each condition, as I'm showing here. And in each pool of samples, we try to have a balance count for the day seven, eight, nine, and 10 after IVP. So we wanted to make sure that we have a balance as better as we can in each of the pool to do the comparisons after and identify the differential accessible regions on a seek. We took all of the samples and we used the same protocol as we did for the tissue samples. And we were happy enough because as you may guess, we didn't have the same input amount of cells for each one of the analysis. Here we are, playing, we are working with blastomeres and about 5,000 cells. For the tissue samples, our input was 50,000 cells for each tissue sample. So here we have a very low input amount of cells and we were happy enough that it worked and it's what I'm going to show. And we have analyzed the data using the NF core Bovreg pipeline for a toxic that's that Jose presented before. When we look at the data generated for this experiment on a toxic, on the first picture in black, we have the insert size distribution for the inserts that we have after the sequencing on the first graph on the left. And there we can see two peaks. One peak around 100 base pairs, 120, which corresponds to the nucleosome fifth fraction of the inserts. And the second peak around 200, 220, which corresponds to the mononucleosomes. We know from ENCODE recommendation that a good ataxic data must have the peaks on nucleosome fifth fraction and also on the mononucleosomes. So we were happy to see that most of the samples exhibited the pattern that we want to see when we look at the insert size. When we look at the second graph in black, we have the enrichment close to the transcription start sites of the genes. And we, we can see that indeed we have the enrichment for all of the samples analyzed for this experiment. And when we look at the last graph on up, it's the FRIP score with the colorful ones. And we can see that the majority of the reads are indeed mapping within ataxic peaks, which corresponds to the FRIP score. And it's higher than 0 0.3, which follows the ENCODE recommendation. So we were happy to see that we have pretty consistent data. And on the last graph, we have the number of peaks colored in each one of the samples for each one of the replicates. So we can see that the number of peaks is pretty consistent across the different replicates, allowing us to perform differential accessibility analysis with this data. 
but is still looking on the quality of the ataxic data. We can also have a look on the peak length distribution and fold chain distribution for each one of the replicates. And we can continue to see that it's pretty consistent between all the replicates that we analyze it. So we have good quality data even with a low input amount of cells since the beginning, with 5,000 cells since the beginning. So we decided to proceed and use the da this data to identify differentially accessible regions for the metabolic experiment. To do so, whoops, now it's not moving anymore. Okay, to do so, we have used a pipeline that was developed also based on the ENCODE data, CSOL pipeline, which better accommodates the background noisy that we have around the peaks when you are doing the comparison, when you normalize the data and when you compare on the different samples. We use the pipeline and we have three different contrasts. The control group versus the BSA plus oleic acid, which is the first one, and we have 1,733 regions differentially accessible with FGR of 0.05. The second contrast with BSA median versus control, where we have a little bit less, 900. And the third contrast, it's a little bit lazy. It's after lunch, okay. In the third contrast, it's BSA versus BSA plus oleic acid. And we also have a little bit less, 942. But we can see that we have differentially accessible regions on all the three contrasts. When we look at the intersection of these three contrasts, we have different regions that were exclusively for each comparison or also significant on the different comparisons. And I want to highlight here first one example where when we look at the contrast with BSA plus oleic acid versus control, and the other one, the BSA versus BSA versus oleic acid, the true contrast that has BSA plus oleic acid, we have 284 regions that are differentially accessible. When we look at the top region from this list, we see one region after downstream the gene SGK1, which is differentially accessible. Here we have a print screen for IGV. On the bottom, in blue, we have the two control samples. Then we have the two BSA samples and the two BSA plus oleic acid. We can see that the region is more open, it's more accessible on the BSA with oleic acid and on the BSA sample compared to control. And here the thing is, despite the fact that it overlaps with a CTCF binding site, when we overlap with the data from BOVREG, with the function notation of BOVREG, this region was already open and increased for the openness when we had added the median BSA. So we cannot really say that it's only because of the oleic acid. Here we have the effect of the BSA median when we add to the comparison also significant. So we cannot really say that this is because of the concentration only of because of the concentration of oleic acid. Despite the fact that this could be an interesting gene in our comparison, since the activity of this gene is associated with embryo implantation. So we, it could be an interesting one, but we cannot really say that's because of the concentration of oleic acid. But when we look at the genes that were exclusively detected on the BSA with oleic, oleic acid control, comparential control, and it was not significant on the contrast with BSA and BSA OA, which is the list of 1,217. We have a nice example on this gene, which is called IFNT2. And on the top, I'm showing in red all the IGV print screen from this region for the treatment where we have oleic acid. And on the bottom, we have all the control samples we can already see that indeed we have this region open after we have oleic acid on the median. And this region is not open when we have the standard way on the controls. And this gene is really interesting to see because this gene encodes a protein that's very important for pregnancy recognition in ruminants. 
So it's a gene that could be very interesting as a biomarker for the comparison that we are looking for in the kind of effects that we are looking for. So it's one nice results that show that we indeed have pretty consistent results when we do the four different replicates, even using a low input amount of cells on the comparison for the metabolic experiment. But we also have the heat stress experiment, the seasonal experiment that Jens presented before. And we decided to have a look and try to characterize the profile of the open chromatin on the seasonal experiment too. And this experiment, move, okay. We have the semen collected as Jens presented for three different bulls on summer 2018 and three different bulls on winter. And we have the production of embryos, what, what I'm calling here F1, but it's the embryos produced with the semen from F F0. And we have the production of this embryo corresponding to the semen on the summer, collected on the summer, and the semen collected on the winter. For this comparison, we have three different replicates. And in each replicate, again, we're trying to balance to have day seven, eight, nine, and 10 after IVP to be able to have a well-balanced pool of samples. And we use this information to perform differential accessibility analysis, keeping in mind that we have here three bulls and the semen collected from three bulls. So for the first comparison, For the first comparison and looking at the quality of the data, we could see that now it changed a little bit compared to the metabolic experiment. When we look at the insert size pattern that we expect to have a peak, two different peaks, so nucleosome free fraction and mononucleosome, we see that for some samples we do have, but for some samples we don't have the pattern as we expect. The same for the TSS, we still have an enrichment which is quite variable between the samples, but we still have an enrichment around TSS. And when we look at the number of peaks detected in each of the sample, including the replicates, we see that it's not so consistent across the different samples as we have for the metabolic experiment. Here I'm showing the graph with the number of peaks detected in each replicate, and also the fold chain distribution for all these peaks detected. Especially when we look on these samples that I'm highlighting in red, these samples are coming for exactly the same batch. On this experiment, we have two batches because first we receive the samples and we process it, all of them. And after we receive the samples f several months after and we process it, all of them. Indeed, we have the first batch that do not produce the same reliable results as the second batch. So for the next analysis, I'm excluding these samples since they are highly variable compared to the other two, which are from the second batch. And on the first idea to explore the data and try to identify the differential accessibility on these embryos, we put together two replicates for each bull on the same group. So we have three bulls, two replicates, six samples. Here we compared six samples summer, six samples winter, knowing that we have three bulls within each of the group. By doing this comparison, we only detected eight regions which were differentially accessible. And, but interesting, when we look at these regions intersecting with the data of Bovreg on the functional annotation, the top one is located in a poised enhancer in an intron of this gene, PALGA1. And in this region is a poison enhancer because it's also expressed on the tissue that we are looking here on IGV. It's differentially accessible and this gene is known to be affected by stressors, exterior stressors, and to impact cell differentiation and proliferation. It could be an interesting mark to look at, but it's important to keep in mind that we know that we may ha have some effects on the bulls, that we have three bulls on the comparison. We may have a huge bull effect here that we are not considering on the first comparison. We still need to work on the model that we are using to compare these samples. As take-home message and perspectives, 
we are still trying to find the best way to analyze the data and combine the DNA methylation and RNA-seq data that we have from these embryos, also including the F2 generation. Here I'm only showing the results for the F1 or embryos generated with the semen from F0 to make the most of this data and understand the impact on the profile of chromatin accessibility. But we can already say that from the preliminary results that we have, we do have interesting biomarkers that are affected by the different conditions when we do profiling of chromatin accessibility. I would like to thank the partners and open for questions. Thank you, Gabriel. There's already one hand up from Jens. So just comment, one comment to this metabolic stress experiment, why we have these three different groups. I think we should really focus on the comparison of BSA plus oleic acid and BSA alone, because this is more to the natural condition, because oleic acid in the animal is transported with albumin. It yep. never just, it does not dissolve in the blood. It's always trans in, in connection with albumin. There we, therefore, we use this BSA control group. Yes. This control medium here is a medium optimized for in vitro production. And uh, if you change anything, then you will have effects. Yes. So yes. we really should focus on, on this comparison. Yeah, we have been discussing about this, I and mean, it's, it's true. It's exactly what we are focus on the comparison. Here's just some preliminary results, but yeah, okay. I agree with you. But yeah. very nice results, thank you. Other questions or comments? Emily. It's really interesting. I was just wondering if there would be any benefit to performing long read sequencing with Oxford Nanopore, maybe to look at loss of function mutation in the different um, summer versus winter, and then also generate orthogonal methylation information, maybe. But I don't know if there's enough material it, or it's possible. Yeah, it could be interesting. It's one of, one of the suggestions to think. But we want to at least, on the first moment, have a look integrating with the RNA-seq data that we have from CRISTA. So I think it will be a first layer of integration that we can have a better idea of what is happening. But it's a nice suggestion for the future and how to proceed with the samples. Thank you.